One of the top wins we've had since I've been here at Drake. It was the first time a Pioneer Football League team has won at Butler since the league was, uh, was uh, established. Uh, it was a long trip, you know, 500 miles each way, but uh, we came home with a win, made the bus ride a little shorter on the way home. It was a great day for us. Certainly uh, this game starting to be a kind of a rivalry between the Bulldogs and uh, a nice win for you. It really was. Uh, you know, you go back over the history of this game. Uh, two years ago, the first meeting, Butler beat us 28-3. to Last year at home, it was 28-20, to but they still won. Uh, this year, 29-3, to or 29-8 to for us. So, you know, we've made it a rivalry now because each of us has won at least one game, and I anticipate lots more good games. I know you were asked once, maybe 100 times last week, how are you going to stop their big running back? He's a horse. Arnold Mickens is a great player, and you're not going to stop Arnold Mickens from getting his yards. He gets the ball too many times, and he's just too good of a runner. But, uh, you know, what we wanted to do was try to keep him out of the end zone, uh, keep his long runs, you know, 20 yards instead of 40, and his his five-yard runs, you know, he makes them into 10-yarders. We wanted to keep him at that and not let him get the home run. He didn't get any touchdowns in the game, so that was good. I think one of the things that uh, we're going to see in the highlights, especially specialty teams, played a big key for Greg. No question about it, Nick. The, the biggest difference between these two teams was the special teams. Our uh, punt block team had a block. Our field goal team had a block. We got ourselves in position to score. Uh, got a safety on the special teams. Biggest difference between the two teams, and our kids believe in it now. Well, it was a great win on the, uh, by the Bulldogs. We'll have a look at the highlights coming up right after this. Quality. Back to the Rob A. Show. Well, Coach, you know going into this ball game, it would be no cakewalk. You know it was going to be a tough game. We thought it would be, Mick. Even though Butler's had a little bit of a tough start to their season, it was a fresh start because it was the first game in the league. And they came out, parents weekend, you know, the whole business, they were really ready to play, and they played extremely well. They played a lot better than they have earlier in the year, but our guys were up for the challenge. Well, let's get to the highlights. I'm excited to see the highlights of this football game. Hard hitting, I'm told. Oh, it was a really hard hitting game. A beautiful setting, beautiful day for games, sunny. You know, the Butler Stadium seats about 20,000 people. They didn't have 20,000 there, but they had a good crowd. And and, uh, you know, it was, a, the, it was a setting that was great for a college football game. They, their team was really ready. This is the first play of the game. They won the toss, took the ball. We did a great job, Brian Andrews and other guys, stringing out Arnold Mickens and, and uh, holding him to very few yards on his first carry. The second carry, you can see the, the same thing happened. He was trying to work his way out of there, but he couldn't. Defense off to a great start, so we got him uh, shut down, and they punted to us on the very first series. And we opened up with one of our favorite plays just to try to get some tempo. Charlie Schimberg gets about seven yards, and uh, unfortunately he suffered an injury uh, to his ankle. And he was obviously in a lot of pain here, and the trainers came out and looked at it, and uh, you know, it was a devastating blow to us at the time because Charlie is our leading rusher, of course, all-conference player, and that was his last carry of the game. He was out for the entire game, and you're going to see that we had a young man come in and do a great job in Charlie's uh, place. We had to punt the ball away, and here's one of the many special teams plays you're going to see. Now, Pete Loba, he thought that was the goal line, but he did a good job of downing the ball in there, so Butler had to start really deep in their own territory. They tried to run a fullback counter play, and then look at the top of the screen here on the punt. You'll see Mike McKee, number 13, come in and block the punt for a safety. That ball rolled out of the end zone, hit the goal post, came back in, but we got a safety. So our punt pinned him down deep. Then our punt block team got the block, and the first points of the bo on the board uh, were scored by the special teams. Now you're looking at Jason Grove here, number 34. Uh, th Jason started uh, at tailback for us. He's a freshman. And this is about what you're looking at here is probably his second or third carry in his career as a starter, at least. He had about nine carries last week. And what a great move there. He had a guy at the 32-yard line that he made miss, and he ended up on the 12. He got some extra yards. Now he powers inside. Uh, down to about the five yard line. Uh, very good running, very good power running. Uh, we got stopped after a penalty and it was third and goal and this is a tremendous throw from Roy Fletcher to Rich Hoskins for the touchdown. I believe we have this on instant replay here. If you look at the top of the screen, you'll see uh, Hoskins breaking inside of his defender. Great protection by the line. It gives Roy a clear path to throw. The defender for Butler makes a great effort here to try to knock the ball down, but Hoskins has great concentration, gets down, sells out to make the play and makes the touchdown grab. That was a beautifully executed play and two seniors, you know, helping us uh, get it done. So we got the 9-0 lead and, and um, Mickens is still having trouble. This is a very important third down play, third and about three. He's got to get to the next line, but Jeremy Fisher and uh, the rest of the guys there keep him from getting up to the 40 and uh, we stopped him. And then Pete Lobi, here's our number two fullback. Doesn't look too bad, does he? <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for a starting job. Yeah, Pete did a great job, and, and that was a super run. He made some guys miss. He's running with a lot of power. 
Our offensive line obviously is doing a great job too because you know he's getting through clean up to the defensive back level. But Pete Lobai had a great game, almost 100 yards rushing for the game. Then we ran the counter there to Grove, and our, our running game really was was superior. And we were trying to run the football hard in this game, uh, you know, to keep Mickens off the field. There's a play right there, a counter play that, that did not work, although the hole was there. And so we had to settle for a field goal try, and Mike McKee uncharacteristically missed one. We had a good opportunity there to, to get more points because of the good running game, but we were stopped. And so we go now into the second quarter, and here's where uh, Butler starts to make some plays. Uh, that was a third down play right there. We had him stopped, but the quarterback scrambled and got it to Mickens. And then he's got a play here where it's uh, third down is short and he makes a couple of guys miss, almost gets away completely. Excellent run by Mickens there. Here's another third down and three, and he runs hard, runs over the pile, and, and they've got three or four first downs in a row. But now they'll try a reverse. And look at the top of the screen. We're going to show an arrow. John Kunster gets clipped right there. And instead of having the ball on the 14-yard line, uh, they got moved all the way back to the 38-yard line. And on third and about 25, they tried to throw a swing pass to Mickens. It was well covered, incomplete and so they had to punt it back to us. So the defense, with the aid of the penalty, got out. And then on the first play, we could have broken this game open, but uh, again, uncharacteristically, we missed a wide open pass, and so we had to punt it back to, uh, to Mickens and company, and here he goes. I mean, the guy is a great runner. He's 220 pounds. When he gets through that line and gets up ahead of steam, he's very difficult to stop. Uh, here's a fourth down play. If you look at the sticks, fourth down, they go with a, a pass. It was about fourth and 10, and um, Number 24, who's their outstanding kick returner, uh, Andridas, makes a good catch. They get first and goal. Mickens tries to go outside here, but uh, Kerman Mason helps make the stop. And then it's third and goal now on about the seven. Who are you going to go to? You're going to Mickens again. He tries to run the counter. And Jay Smirka, Eric Musha, and some of the other guys inside make the play. And then Tommy Becker comes through with the block on the field goal. Right off the corner, beautiful block. And uh, Butler had run 26 plays in the second quarter, no points by, due to a special teams play. Well, we're at halftime. Let's take a look at some of our fine sponsors here at the Rob A Show. Coach, what'd you tell them at halftime of that ball game? Well, tell them to get some rest, Mick, especially our defense. <laughs> we were very concerned about our defense wearing down in the, in the second half because it was hot. We had played tons and tons of plays uh, in the second quarter, and we had, but we had the ball first to start the second half. Robbie Berkeley had a good return, but on third down and three, Pete Lobi runs hard, gets the first down, but fumbled. And so our worst thing that could have happened is we gave the ball to, to uh, uh, Butler right away at the start of the third quarter in uh, our own territory. It was our only turnover of the game, but it really put, caused us a lot of concern. On fourth down, watch this play by Mickens. He's bottled up at the line, but he bounces around, finds a way to get a first down, and we're thinking, boy, this could be tough. Um, they proceeded to drive the ball down inside the 25-yard line, and then they came up with their only touchdown of the day, a halfback pass from Mickens. Tommy Becker had great coverage here on the receiver. He wasn't fooled at all. He was there. But the guy made a great play, so it was nine to six. Then they went for two, not quite sure why, but they made it, and uh, so that made it nine to eight, and we were, in, we were in difficulty. We came back, decided we've got to run the football and get out of a jam. Jason Grove there on a counter, excellent job of opening the holes by the front guys. Another play outside, good blocking by Ed Jennings, Garrett LaFleur, Pete Lobi, uh, and Jeff Portman on that side of the line on those outside plays. And then here's Pete running up inside behind Nate Schneider and Garrett again at guard and Felix Gallagher and uh, you know, doing a good job. We got ourselves into third and four, a nice pass there against the Blitz from uh, Fletcher to Chad Westberg. But then on fourth down and four plays later, we had fourth and three. We tried the same play again, and the ball just uh, fell incomplete. Now, here's the big play of the game because they had stopped us. It's still nine to eight, and Jeremy Fisher ripped the ball away from Mickens, and uh, Anthony Fuller, number 89, recovers. That's going to be our play of the week later, and I'll give it to you in detail. But uh, that was a huge play because we got the ball here on the 30-yard line. Great play fake then by Fletcher. And look at this, uh, this throw and catch here. Perfectly thrown ball. Great catch by... Uh, Hoskins, and I think we have this one on replay also. First play after the turnover, nine to eight. We need a great play in order to, to make something happen, and Hoskins provides it. You can see he had a step on the, on the defender. He goes up high to get the football. The defender grabs him around the waist now. He's trying to cause some you know, uh, problems, but he, he's got it there in his hands, and you can see the great concentration now because as the ball comes down in his hands, it's it bobbled a little bit because the guy has a hold of him. But he keeps his eyes on the ball, cradles it into his body, and makes the catch. Now that's a, 
an all-conference, all-American type play, great throw by Fletcher. And you know, we've got a saying on our team that football is players making plays. And that's what it comes down to. There's another great play, great coverage, and Jay Smirka getting a sack. And then here's another special teams uh, bonus for us. They, they muff a snap. And this is a, a fumbled uh, lateral pass. It's a muffed lateral pass. It's not a fumble. So Kerman can't get credit for the touchdown here. Very confusing. We thought we had a touchdown, but uh, he can't advance a, a muffed lateral. And so we had to run the ball in. Pete Lobi got the touchdown. So in the space of just a, uh, you know, a couple minutes, we had two quick touchdowns. And then watch what happens here on the kickoff right after that other touchdown. You're going to see two young guys that don't play much except on special teams coming into the picture on the left-hand part of the screen right at the 30-yard line. Number 47, Frank Harlenbachus. Number 32, uh, Sean Swanepoel. Now their, their job is to break up the wedge. And you can see all these Butler guys trying to block them. There's about three or four guys trying to block 47 and 32. And they just destroy the blockers. You can see all the black shirts from Butler on the ground here as uh, Harlenbachus and Swanee broke up the wedge. And then Swanee, not more than that, he sorts out everything, finds the guy with the ball, <laughs> and makes a tackle, knocking him backwards. Those kind of plays were devastating against, uh, against Butler with the special teams. Mickens wasn't through, however. Uh, he broke through there right away and got Butler right back in the football game with another excellent run. The key there was, though, that our defensive backs stopped him from, from taking it all the way. They kept him penned in until help came, got him down. Kerman Mason made the tackle. So we go in the fourth quarter, still 22 to 8. Now our defense comes up with another great play. Tommy Becker stops the tight end there. Can't see it very well, but he stripped the ball away from the tight end at the end of that play. And we, Matt Garvis recovered. And so the turnovers made a big difference. Okay, here we've got another special teams play. Just trying to put some of these in here because we felt that they were so important in this game and uh, Brian Peck punts us out of difficulty, good coverage there. Uh, so the defense got the ball back, we were able to punt it out of there and uh, you know, make Butler work the long field again. And it's a good thing because Mickens really got rolling. He was, uh, like I say, when he gets out into the open field, he's very tough. But it came down right after that run, defense held and they're gonna try to run to the left. Watch Brian Peck on the line at the top, number 90. He's going to split a double team and make contact in the backfield, and then Garvis finishes Mickens off. So on fourth and two, they fail to convert, and that seemed to spark our offense back to life again. Here's an excellent run by um, uh, Grove again. Uh, Matt uh, Jones, number 77, was the key blocker on that. Jones, he did a great job all day. Here's another wide run by, behind those uh, tight side linemen, tight end. Uh, Grovey making a good run. Excellent cut here by Pete Lobi back behind. You can see Butler still hitting hard. They hit hard all game. And then we ran uh, behind Gallagher and Jonesy and Brendan Daly. And uh, Grove gets in there and, and got the touchdown. So that was a clinching touchdown in the fourth quarter uh, by the freshman, his first college touchdown. Uh, Butler still wasn't finished. They tried to come back at the end of the game. But Craig McLean, number 18, makes an interception. And that was key, too, because we like the idea of having sort of a dominating score for the rest of the conference schools to look at. Ended up 29-8. to Well, congratulations to Drake Bulldogs. You know, specialty teams just don't happen. You have to practice it. Oh, that's right, Nick. We work a lot on specialty teams and, and our players. A lot of times they, they have a tendency to relax a little bit with special teams. Time, time comes in practice. We won't let that happen. We believe in it very much. One of the other areas, we saw a lot of good runs there, but that also starts right up there at the line of scrimmage. Good our, holes. our offensive line had their best game for a long time. There, we had some uh, size advantage up front but the guys did a good job of taking advantage of that size and opening up big holes for the backs. Coach, let's take a look at the statistics of this ball game. There you go. Not a lot to see here, Mick. Very balanced, really. Total yards about even, possession time about even, and so forth. I mean, the, the big difference was the score, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's, I guess that's all that matters. 58 yards passing yards. I noticed that up there. Well, thanks for reminding me on that, Mick. We had a couple that we should have had 80 on a couple plays. and You know, it's, it's all right, though. What the, the key was we won without having a great passing day for once. I think our passing game will be back. Let's look at the uh, standings. I was hoping Dayton wasn't up there. <laughs> <laughs> they're always up there. Can't think too much about them yet. They seem to have a fine team, and they're 1-0, they're and o, but so are we. And we're still in control of our own destiny. Evansville hasn't played a conference game yet, but you can see, look at their record. They're 3-1. and one. They've got a good team. They're our next opponent. Uh, very strange to see Valparaiso and Butler down at the bottom because those are the two Division II teams from a couple years ago. And, um, you know, I think they'll be back up before the year's over. Still hard to kind of read the conference yet, but I think it's still going to be pretty balanced. It'll be very balanced. I think there'll be a lot of shuffling around before it's over. And somebody's got to get Dayton. We don't play them for three weeks. We'll see what happens between now and then. Okay, Coach. We'll be back with our play of the game and also a player interview right after this.
I've been doing this forever. I don't know how to do anything. Show time now for our Capital City Buick play of the game. Here's head coach Rob Ash. This week's play of the week was a fumble recovery by our defense at a critical time in a football game. It was 9-8. to eight. Drake was ahead. We had just missed on a fourth down and three play at about the 20-yard line going into Butler's end zone, and offense had to come off the field. Defense had to go back out right away, and Arnold Mickens, you know, is going to get the football. Here's Mickens, number 32, in the backfield. He's going to take the handoff here back at the 17-yard line and, and try to come on his zone dive. First of all, you can see what a good player he is. He's back here making a great cut, getting away from two defensive players and he finds an opening. But as he comes through, you're gonna see Jeremy Fisher, number three, coming across and make the, the good play getting the ball out. Jeremy's gonna make the first hit. Of course, his first job is to tackle him, but watch right here as Jeremy makes the tackle. He realizes he has a hold of the football and he physically strips the ball out of Micken's grasp right there, pulling the ball out. Now we're gonna run it back and you can see right here at this point, when Fisher pulls his arm, you can see the ball right there bouncing out of Micken's arms. Of course, there's such a pile, everybody trying to come and tackle him, and the, the ball, they saw the ball come out. If you look right down here, nobody knew where it was, but there it comes rolling out of the pile, and uh, Anthony Fuller had to chase it a little bit, but he did come up with it, and so we ended up recovering the football and getting it back in our possession. You can tell by Fisher's reaction, everybody else on the defense, that they were extremely pleased with themselves, and they ought to be. It was not a lucky play. Uh, it was a play that was caused by the defense, and it was really a key play in the game. And another great defensive effort on the part of the Drake Bulldogs. Now a chance to meet one of the Drake Bulldogs. It's our home team pizza player interview. Here's Glenn Norman. Well, the Drake Bulldogs come over here to Butler today and pull off a very big conference victory to go 1-0 in Pioneer Football League play today as they beat Butler. And one guy who was very instrumental in keeping Arnold Mickens out of the end zone, senior defensive end Brian Peck joins us. And Brian, boy, you came into today's game with your hands full defensively with this Arnold Mickens. He is the real deal, but you guys were able to hold him down. He had to get his yards the hard way. Yeah, Coach Neiman put a, game, a good game plan together. Um, our main deal was just, you know, kind of our backers were slow flow. Uh, backside pursuit was kind of slow because a big time the big play last year was a cutback and if we could stop that we could basically stop Arnold Mickens but I mean he's a good back he broke some broke some plays open today and I mean people can see that he's a real good running back and, and Rob was talking about the idea was kind of to so that the defensive ends funneled him to the linebackers linebackers to the safeties, safeties to the corners or corners vice versa right. and that's really how it worked out today yeah um, our main emphasis is just team defense I mean our just do your job, do it 100%, and then we should, I mean, we should contain anybody. I mean, that's just the deal. I mean, that's how our defense is set up. That's the way Coach Neiman coaches it and the assistant coaches as well. They actually wound up more yards passing than they did running. Did it surprise you that they threw as much as they did, even though you had the lead in the ball game? And, and were they able to complete more on you than you thought maybe they would? Um, I think because initially we started shutting down the run. Uh, I mean, usually offenses will convert more towards the pass, but, you know, when Mickens started breaking a couple, I think he had a 30-yarder and a 40-yarder in the third quarter or something like that. I mean, they were still pounding the ball. I mean, that, that's their main emphasis. That's, that's their bread and butter play. So I don't see why they would leave it. But yet the key was to keep him from ripping off those 50 and 60 yard end zone runs that, that would result in scores and you, and you did that. Right. That was We watched a lot of tape of last year's game and a lot of times he had a lot of plays where he'd run 30, 40 yards and that's why he ran so much for so many yardage last year. But, you know, our again, our team defense just... There's no real individual on this defense right now. I mean, it's a team defense. We're going, you know, 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. So, following the great defensive line off of last year with Craig Ortworth and those guys, really seeing the chance to get your real first significant starting playing time. What sorts of things did you learn from those guys last year? Because you guys are firing off the ball just the same this year. Well, with Todd Lee and Craig Ortworth, I mean, those two were all conference, and, and you learn a lot as far as waiting in the wings. I mean, I, they always told me, always tell me, coming off the sideline, being a, too deep, you know, what to, what to look for, what exactly how this guy's reaching out, what's happening up front. Um, but co I have to give a lot of uh, credit to Coach Anderson. I mean, he's a great D-line coach. He really knows how to get us up for games. And, you know, we when we came into the season, we knew we had a big task ahead of us. I mean, that was the main emphasis of this ball club was our D-line. So Coach Anderson and, again, Coach Neiman did a great job in getting us fired up. You know, this one of the great things about you two, Brian, is a very versatile performer, a guy who's come in and filled in for Matt Sneller. And what do you do? You lead the Pioneer Football League in punting. A lot of versatility coming out of your one spot. Well, I was originally recruited as a punter. So I came in and I punted my freshman year and, and traveled with the team. Um, when they had Matt Sneller come in, I mean, he does, he does a good job. But he got injured at the St. Ambrose game. So I just stepped in there. And I mean, I'm just, I'm just doing what I'm told, just doing my job. So. 
And, and the special teams were such a big difference today in a lot of different areas. I know that that's an area you guys emphasize really strongly. Yeah, Coach Ash, um, he keeps telling us in two days and everything like that is that this team has really put a more emphasis on special teams. Um, I mean, again, punt return, punt coverage, kickoff coverage, all the way around the ball. I mean, we just went down there, fl flew around, caused some fumbles, caused some block punts, and just really got the job done up front. Well, the Drake defense and special teams have been terrific, and this guy's a member of both. Brian Peck, our guest on the Rob Ash Show. It's apparent when you arrive. The Butler game behind you, it's Evansville coming to town. What do you know about them? Evansville's got a good team, Nick. Last year they struggled, but this year they're a lot better. They've got a lot of veteran people back. They've got some excellent freshmen, and their football team's a lot better. They're 3-1. and one. The one loss came on a field goal with about 20 seconds left where they got beat. So they've been in every game, and they're ready to play. They think they can win the league, and they're going to come into our place trying to get off to a good start. Well, it's the homecoming, of course, for the Drake Bulldogs. We've had some great crowds out there, and the Bulldogs also are, are improving every game. I think that's right, and it's going to be a tremendous football game. I hope we have a big home crowd for homecoming and a, and a group of people who want to see an exciting football game. Evansville has a wide open offense. They've got the best uh, you know, passing game overall in the league. They're trying to run the football better. Uh, we've had to score a lot of points the last two years to beat them, so it'll, it should be an exciting game. One good note for the Bulldogs, everybody pretty much getting healthy right now. I think we might have 100% again, and we're getting healthy at the right time of the year. Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. We'll see you back here next week on The Rob A Show.